Is it a happy story? Be it I happy stories. Plural. <laughs> it's a happy story. Oh. Yep. I just got back from Florida a couple of nights ago. And uh, I think the weather came with me. <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see, where shall I start? Oh, yeah. Last, uh, Last, um, last, uh, Wednesday, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, last Wednesday, this is the crazy thing. Uh, I ended up having to work and pack for this trip. I was packing for this trip all week, pretty much. And uh, I, I traveled out on a red eye flight on Wednesday night. Um, at 12.45 a.m. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a nice cheap flight. Uh, I can't really complain unless I'm, unless I'm sitting next to Killian Murphy. I have no <laughs> issues. <laughs> wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, so I get on there, um, and I borrowed, I, I, I was concerned about two things. I was concerned about either getting sick on the trip or possibly, or, or before the trip or getting a major, um, major league, uh, migraine headaches while down there. Thanks to allergies. Cause that's what happened last time. Oh dear. Neither which happened, and I think I have a pretty good re. I think I have a pretty good. Uh, I think I have a pretty good indication as to why, because before I left work, I not only just bought. I not not only bought emergency, but I was downloading that stuff like it was crack, and uh, uh, so by the time. By the time of the next morning, getting to Florida, I, I, I guess I was uh, pretty well. My body was pretty well prepped for anything, just about. Um, you were indestructible. You were just like, bring it on! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, germs. <laughs> yeah, show me what you're made of. Um, but of course, the the thing that I always hate about red eye flights happens. Try to sleep. Just try sitting up. It's not happening. I even had a neck pillow. By the I, um, I drifted off maybe for about half an hour, tops, and then when I woke up again, the pillow had deflated on me. So I guess oh. it's going in the trash. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I get. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying this now. This is kind of interesting. <laughs> God is great. Thank you for this delicious meal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Okay. Um. So the next, so the day goes on. I I stop off at another at another location. I get on the next plane, and I make it all the way all the way to all the way to Tampa. And as soon as I'm coming out, and this is the thing that's excited me so much for the trip, is like I get to see all these people who I who I have never seen in person, but I have talked to so for so many years. Sarah, uh, Dan, Michael, Sam, and of course Morgan, who was formerly of CR. Uh, and as soon as I come off, I, as I come off the. Uh, as I come off the um, the plane, they're waiting for me right there. It was such a beautiful little moment, Aww. and 
And it it was kind of like, oh my gosh, these people who, I, who I've only seen behind a screen this all this time for so many years, who I've hang out, hung out with and watched movies with and did projects and collaborations with, they're real. They're right here in front of me. And so... Um, and they looked back at me and they were like, man, you told, you told us you were tall, but when you came off the plane, we thought you were a school teacher. <laughs> well, funny you should say that. I used to be one. Yeah. I used to work in the school system. Um, we took, we got my luggage. It took about an hour to get back. And, um... For the next several days, um, it was it, it it was just it was just an amazingly fun trip the the whole the whole time. Uh, we went we went and got to to different um, uh, restaurants and everything. Got to eat s'mores. Uh, got to have Coke meatloaf, which is yeah Coca Coca Cola meatloaf. This is the thing. And it's good. So I gather you make like a normal meatloaf kind of mix, and then you just put Coke in there. Yeah, you marinate it with uh, with Coca Cola before you start. And then, okay. then you you fry the meatloaf. Wow. Yeah, it's good stuff. Interesting. Because huh. yeah. I've been taught in a way where you can like. Um, you can cook a ham joint. A half joint? Yeah. A ham joint. Oh, a ham. Oh, a ham. Ham. Unless you said half oh. joint, like what? Half joint, is that like you take a joint, you roll up a joint and then you cut it in half? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we, uh, we got to see where Dan works, uh, confession time, Dan works at Game Traders, which is essentially GameStop, uh, only if it's, uh, only a lot more variety, and, and, uh, it's more of a mom and, mom and pop location. I splurged. <laughs> I freaking splurged. I, I, we go in there and what? And can you blame me? Because we go in there and they have, they have systems, all the way back to the early, to to the eighties. You know, they've got they got Nintendos, Game Boys, uh, Genesis. Hello. So somebody, you know, somebody had to come, everybody had to come back with something. So it was, uh, it, it was a big, it was kind of a big deal. Um, hello, my folks just got home. <gasps> mm-hmm. Mike, uh, uh, Mike, uh, also known as the, the gamer of the group. It buys a, a Genesis while while we're over there. Wow. Wow. For which he has a Sega Master System adapter. Oh. And he's brought all these games over from the UK. Uh, that that he wants to play with us. Uh, we got to we got to watch him uh, conquer Ninja Gaiden, <laughs> which is. You know, kind of a tough game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, yes, uh, it was the it was the Master System version, uh, which is a little bit easier than the Nintendo version, I think. Okay. We had several live streams down there. One of which was a gift giving, mm -hmm. not shown in the live stream. Is me. Uh, uh, handing off my my old my old webcam as gift as a gift as well as uh, yeah Sam also got a, a game for me on Steam, okay. but fully 
you're fully aware, fully, uh, uh, fully aware towards anyone who is wa uh, who is watching. Yes, a bag full of jelly babies exploded on Dan's chest. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> hey, you son of a bitch! Were you all watching that? Yeah. Yeah, I I came in near the end. I, yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yeah, I was watching it. You should, James, you should know I was watching it. I know you were watching it, but Mike. Yeah, I was watching it. I told you I wasn't chatting, but I was watching it. I, mean, I was like, caught, like, like Cody said, I was like, like at the end too as well. I didn't get to see the beginning of it. So yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I saw the experiment with the warheads. Yeah, challenge, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, oh, Michael, bless him. <laughs> the, his face was really like a like a tomato with those things. Yeah. And so, I'm moving on. Let's see what else did we do. We did a miniature golf course while we were there. Oh. In the dark, inside. Hmm. Which, um, which was crazy. But... You know, everything was under a black light, so we got we got uh, just enough to, to see everything. And I did something completely, completely, completely unexpected. I somehow got, and Sam was there. He can testify when he gets when he gets his ass on here. Um, I got a hole in one in on the second par without even trying. <laughs> wow! Awesome. It was, I, I, the, 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 uh, the, the hole was was several corners away. Um, I and my plan was to bound it off one uh, particular set of corners that I thought, I thought it was gonna get get it get there. I thought it would have. Um, I thought it would have gotten close to the hole, and then I strike again and and get a hole in one. But no, I I hit it way too hard. The ball fly uh, hits the the side of the course, uh, bounces off the off the side of that, goes up uh, goes up uh, over a couple of edges, and then bounces off the wall. And lands right in the cup. Whoa! And I was just like, that 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 was completely by accident. <laughs> I hit it at the wrong angle and everything. And uh, moving forward, let's see what else. Oh yeah, we hit the arcade. I've been promising Sam for months now that I would that I would kick his ass at something during this trip. Um, but I just want to say to be with, to be with this group and, and to be arcade hopping and go from the Simpsons uh, arcade box to uh, uh, turtles in time. It's kind of, it's kind of amazing at first, but then then we started to go get tickets. We all had twenty bucks uh, that we that we went in there with. We were twenty bucks uh, poor or leaving. But um, I somehow got I somehow uh, got eight hundred and eighteen tickets. What? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Dude. What games did you play to get that much? You just really good at ski ball? No, 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 hell no. I tried I tried some ski ball. Uh it was it was that thing was busted. I tried the rock and ball, which is this this thing where you basically drop your token in. It uh the coin rolls and and hits uh, one of the pins. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, 
I kept on hitting 75, which was the highest number. Awesome. <clears throat> and uh, and then during the um, when uh, during this one particular baseball diamond game, I hit uh, a couple of home runs on the third, which is the fastest pitch. And um, yeah, I got. I got over 100 tickets that way, and I was just sort of standing there uh, picking them up as they were coming out. <laughs> just like a long string of tickets. That kind of reminds me of like one, one time when I was on holiday in the Isle of Wight. Uh, this was, I think I just turned 18, so it was just, um, yeah, a good while ago. And uh, we, like, my mum had just got lucky on the bingo, you know. Because we were playing sort of, you know, in the clubhouse, you know, playing bingo, <coughs> as you do on holiday. And then my mum's in the arcade. I don't know what happened, but like I came at one point. And um, there's a thing, I don't know if you guys have one in America, but like you have this um, sort of thing. And you pull it down and it spins this wheel around and then it like slows down and lands and whatever you get, the amount of tickets comes out. And... I think she managed to get the maximum one, and she just and these tickets just came pouring out. And so my mum sounds to stand there, quite embarrassed, just like, "Oh yeah, that was me." But we donated them <laughs> to a kids who would have more use out of them. Mm. Exactly. I mean, it's fun. It's kind of the fun in in ticketing nowadays. It seems more like the seeing how many you can get. Oh yeah. Right. Not like it doesn't it doesn't really earn you anything. No, like all the like the bowling alley and break tree, like they've got ticket uh, ticket games and whatever. But like some of the the prizes that are worth winning and whatever, you like need three thousand tickets or something. Like you know, if you've got like say a hundred and fifty or something, it might buy it might get you a couple of sweets or a key ring or whatever. A couple of sweets and a key ring, you know. Yeah, I mean you might as well. <laughs> It, you go, you, you go look at the, at the at the prizes after that, and you're just like, I I got all these tickets for this. Exactly. It's it's, and the, they they have figurines, they have uh, action figures up there that, you you could have bought just at the store, mm -hmm. if you, uh. Even if you had, uh, and there, and and here's the thing, they set the the ticket amount so that whatever you win, so that whatever you win, is probably you probably have to spend more, just getting tokens and going at the machines, than, than actually going out and buying it yourself. Uh, yes. Mm. But in, the end, but in the end, wasting that 20 bucks so you can buy this sweet little keychain stuff there is all worth it in the end when you see it. Oh, that's a cute little bear. <laughs> oh. I worked hard for you, Jarrett. You're mine. You're mine. <laughs> you this get? man's a lunatic. I actually did my brother. is in a second. Uh, second or third grade, his school does this little Christmas shopping thing, you know, they give you fake money and you get little stuff for your family. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's tiny and cute. Yeah, I keep them on a shot, I keep them in a, in a shot glass on my desk. Oh. Alright. <laughs> that's so... like, that's like me and Mike, it's like, I'm, I'm tiny and cute and he keeps me in a shot glass. <laughs> okay, maybe so not the shot, the... Glass, shot glass bit. So to wrap things up with the with my trip, um, had an excellent time. Uh, shot a couple of episodes while we're down there, we're hoping to get those edited together as soon as possible for an, for whenever God knows when. But um, everything I've shot, it looks great. That's what matters. Uh, several makeout sessions were actually taped. Um, <laughs> oh, behave. <laughs> Make out? I'll leave it at that.
So yeah, nothing went beyond the kissing. Just, just saying. Yeah, it's understandable. So. <laughs> so this part of the so when meeting up with the guys for the first time, just like how was that feeling? You know, just meeting them for the first time and just like seeing them in person and actually like physically touching them or just like you know hanging out with them. Hugging them. You're real. You're actually real. <laughs> Physically touching. That's kind of. That's exactly it. That's. That's. That's kind of how it is. It was kind of. It was really just. I just got this, excited, magical feel in my chest. You know, just I, the whole time, pretty much the whole time we were there. I just. I felt like. Uh, I felt like I wasn't 33 anymore. I was. I was like 10 years old again, and. Uh, just you know, hanging out, hanging out with friends, having sleepovers and, and and whatnot. It was really, it was such it, it was such a relief to, uh, to be able to exit the world, for for a little bit and just, just feel like, uh, just just have some fun. Just thought... just go somewhere, do something interesting. Hang out with hang out with people that you that you really care about in person, and uh, as opposed to as opposed to Skype, which Skype is great. Don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. you you know you can only hug somebody be... like this. Yeah, I want to be able to give Steffi cuddles to people in person. Ah, well, that requires a job, getting money, and uh, you know tickets. I have a job. <laughs> you. Actually, babe, babe, I I'm think I'm talking to Mike. I was gonna say, babe, I think he's pointing that at me, mostly, not you. <laughs> I knew that the jab was at me, so I know, I know. Mhm. Wow. Been telling you for years. I know, for for years, for years, man. But uh, going on and on and on and on. Strange. No, 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 no. Waiting up and down the boulevard of shadows, casting in the night. Okay, How dare you butcher that clap? <laughs> I'm a bit tipsy, so shut up. <laughs> um, so... That's your natural state. <laughs> Thank you. I missed this. I'm sorry. Uh, anyways. Okay, so that's my trip story. Anyways, what's your story, Steph? So, Steph, could you tell the guys your wonderful story and see how they react? Um, okay, so <clears throat> the joke. Uh, basically, uh, Max Miller, as I said, was a entertainer and sort of singer, comedian, whatever, back in Britain, and I think it was must have been like the. 40s and 50s and that sort of thing and one of my friends at the theatre group I go to is a I guess kind of Max Miller impersonator tribute act whatever you want to call it and he did this joke one time in one of our shows and this joke has stuck with me because it's just so funny so uh, it's a sort of funny anecdote and it's all about an eagle and this eagle um, has recently got divorced and he's just flying around in the air as you do as a divorced eagle uh, and he looks down on the ground and he finds a dove so he goes down and has a bit of a, a ding dong with the dove, you know, a bit of hanky panky and so the eagle flies off again and the dove lies back and says, I'm a little dove who had a little love and I liked it so the eagle Goes flying around in the air once again, seeing where to get the next shag from. And he looks down on the ground and he sees a blue tip. So he flies down and has a bit of a ding dong, you know, shag with the blue tip. And the eagle flies off again. And the blue tip lies back and says, I'm a little tit who had a little bit and I liked it. So the eagle's flying around again in the sky looking for his next shag. And then it comes across a duck. 
<laughs> so he goes down to the ground, has a bit of a, a ding dong shag with the duck, and the eagle flies off again. Mike's laughing because he knows what's coming, but you know, and you think you know what I'm about to say, yes. but the duck lies. But the duck lies back and says, "I'm a little Drake, and he's made a massive mistake." <laughs> we can start with the fact that they're not biologically compatible to begin with. But it's, just it's regarding a... that, I get the joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure whether you guys would get it because, like, you know, Max better being British and you guys being American, but hey, it pays off. Break equals male. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little Drake and he's made a massive mistake. <laughs> you know. Uh, okay. And we'll cut to the podcast. See you over there, folks. Thanks for watching this little warm up we did. See you next time. Radio. Bye.